All right. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you happen to be in the world, uh, at your home or alone in the office like I am myself. Um, my name is Jason Walls from QA Cafe. Um, I'm the Director of Technical Marketing. And today we are going to be uh, giving you a quick live session, well, an in-depth live session. I wouldn't even say it's quick, Matt, but <laughs> uh, on uh, testing Wi-Fi products uh, beyond the Fi. And we, we've been thinking about this for a while. Um, and a lot of, there's a lot of focus on, you know, test, testing radio technologies and how difficult that is. Um, and it's certainly necessary to the validation of your fully featured Wi-Fi routers. Uh, but we wanted to take a minute to talk about the rest of the things that uh, comprise, um, you know, truly fully featured Wi-Fi products and uh, how to test them, what to test, who should be doing the testing um, and stuff like that. With me is Matt Langlois. He is our VP of customer success at QA Cafe. Um, and in that role, um, he is an engineer. Um, in that role, he, uh, he actually is very passionate about making sure people know what to test and how to test it um, and who should be doing that testing uh, at what point and in what frequency, et cetera, to have a successful products. Um, and so that's why we've, we've kind of uh, had him take on that role here at QA Cafe. Um, but he's been doing, doing this for a very long time as, and has seen, uh, seen a lot of things happen um, over the course of the history of, of Wi-Fi products. So uh, it's going to be pretty exciting, I think. Uh, what Matt is going to cover, we're going to talk a little bit about the complexity of Wi-Fi itself, um, not just from the physical layer, but from the, um, the plethora of options that uh, Wi-Fi technologies have available and how they interact with the rest of the product, um, higher layer technologies and, and user interaction. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, what tests to run, uh, how to test them, what tools to use, and why you should do it and some strategies for making that testing easier, uh, faster. Uh, and then Matt's gonna actually dive into some examples why we're going, uh, which is really cool. It's stuff that we've seen uh, here at QA Cafe while either uh, working with our customers or interacting with the products that we have in our own labs. Um, just things that you wouldn't think would happen unless you do some really, really in-depth testing uh, that, that we will explain how to do. And then lastly, we're gonna give some tips for uh, CD router users. We have a lot of uh, people on the webinar today that are CD router users. Uh, so we wanna go over a couple of the steps that you can do when you're using um, your CD router test platform to, um, to run this kind of testing and what setup to use. And then after we'll open things up to Q&A. All right, so without further ado, I will turn things over to Matt. All right, thanks Jason. And thank you all for joining us today. As I was preparing for this webinar, one of the things I was thinking about is, is just how important Wi-Fi is today. And really, it's, it's, it's essential. It's critical infrastructure at this point. Um, I think about where I am. I'm, I'm at home. I'm in my home office. I have My son is upstairs on a Zoom call for school. My wife is in her office at the other end of the house. So Wi-Fi today is extremely important. Um, users have really high expectations as well. They expect it to always work with whatever devices they're using. And when it doesn't work, there's big problems. So from a lot of users' perspectives, uh, if Wi-Fi is broken, the internet is broken. Um, and you know what that means is that people can't do their jobs. Students can't get the, the, the schooling that, that, that they need to get. Uh, it really, you know, bad Wi-Fi impacts everybody. It also impacts uh, companies. Uh, you know, the, the home network is now sort of an extension of, of the corporate network for many of us. Uh, it impacts schools. Um, so it's really, it, it's a big deal. And um, with the pandemic, with COVID-19, it's, it's really amplified all of that because many of us are working from home. Um, so Wi-Fi is, is just extremely, extremely important. Having good Wi-Fi uh, makes, it, makes a huge difference and, and is mandatory at this point. Uh, so why is Wi-Fi so difficult? Um, you know, from my perspective, uh, the challenges with Wi-Fi are all related to the home. The home is a scary place. Homes are very challenging environments. They're made out of all kinds of things. They're completely unpredictable. Um, they're, they come in all shapes and sizes, uh, just lots of challenges in the home. Um, home networks also are getting quite big. Uh, one of the things I did 
uh, before this webinar was actually go and look on my router. And, you know, for years, I've been looking at the client list and I said, um, wow, I've got a lot of things connected. Um, but I actually counted this time and I had 29 different devices connected to my home router, which is amazing. It's a lot more than I actually thought it would be. But uh, the home network now is, is growing rapidly for many people. There's all kinds of things connected to it. Um, laptops and IoT devices and cars and, and phones and DVD players and, and, and whatnot. Um, making all of this even more difficult is that consumers are not really Wi-Fi experts, most of them at least. Many of the people on this webinar actually are, but most people aren't. And so setting up a, a, a Wi-Fi network at home um, optimally is beyond many people. Um, so the defaults have to be really good. And some people think they're Wi-Fi experts and they'll get in there and they'll start playing with things. and. Uh, actually make it worse. Like turning the power all the way up on our, on our router actually is not good in most cases. Um, but people just don't know that. Um, Wi-Fi gateways these days are also extremely complex. And you couple that with consumers not being Wi-Fi experts and not knowing how to properly configure things, it's just a recipe for disaster. Uh, and, and lastly, you know, there's, there's always a pressure to keep costs low. People, uh, consumers, they, they want a lot of functionality, but they don't want to pay a lot of money for it. And so the expectations are a little out of, um, they're a little unrealistic, I guess is the way to put it. The other big challenge with Wi-Fi is that I'm, I'm going to call it the Wi-Fi universe. It's, it's massive. It's, it's huge. There's so many different uh, security modes and technologies to deal with, six technologies, uh, in fact, and then many different security modes. There's different frequency bands. There's different channel configurations. You have uh, regulatory issues that you have to worry about in different parts of the world. Uh, and there's just a lot of advanced features, things like band steering um, and, and uh, new MIMO. Uh, all of these things come together. And so it's hard to predict exactly what you will encounter um, or how a, a consumer will configure a device when you have all of these different things uh, in the mix. So the, the key point is to make sure that you test a router uh, as a complete system, sort of black box testing as a finished product. That's really the point that I want to make. There. That's key to understanding the, the end user experience, which is the ultimate goal in, uh, with, with testing in general for these types of products. In terms of what to test, there are really three pillars. Uh, is how I look at it. There's uh, the functionality of protocols and features. So that's the functional testing side of it. There's device performance. And then there's device stability. And then the other thing that you want to think about is testing all of these across all of those different uh, Wi-Fi um, combinations in, in the Wi-Fi universe. So uh, when, you're, when you're setting up a, a test um, strategy or a test environment, uh, you want to make sure that you cover as many of those uh, different modes in the Wi-Fi universe as possible with all three of these um, types of testing activities. So let's talk a little bit about protocols and features. Uh, when you're doing functional testing, the very first thing uh, that, that I tell people to focus on is making sure that the Wi-Fi security modes work. And that's a, that's a large task in and of itself. There's many different modes, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the current best technology in that space is WPA3. So that's usually where I tell people to start. Look at WPA3 personal and enterprise, but you also want to test all the old stuff as well. So WPA2, WPA1, and uh, mixed modes. And honestly, even WEP in some cases. We were talking with a customer a few years ago and they were doing a, a firmware rollout and one of the things that they told us is that they actually missed something on the website. And when they rolled this firmware out, uh, one of their customers, uh, which happened to be a, a, a large factory, was actually still using WEP on the factory floor. And so this firmware update broke um, a lot of the uh, connectivity for the equipment in the factory. So even though current best practices are to not use some of these really old technologies, they're still out there in the wild and you still need to make sure that they uh, are tested 
and, uh, and work as expected or else you're going to encounter issues uh, in the field. Next on the uh, priority list is IPv4 and IPv6 LAN connectivity. That is super important. That has to be rock solid. Uh, that includes things like DHCP, DHCPv6, uh, Slack, uh, ICMP, ICMPv6, um, multicast, all of that stuff comes into play on the uh, IPv4 and IPv6 uh, connectivity side of things. Um, that falls into the core protocols as well, which is next. Um, you have uh, DNS, HTTP, uh, all the application level protocols that, that a consumer would, uh, would potentially use on their, their home network over Wi-Fi. You wanna make sure all that stuff is working as well. Um, then there's also client scaling. Now, you know, when, when you're first diving into this, I always tell people start, keep, keep it simple. Start with a single client, get all of that ironed out, make sure that you have your test procedure uh, set up the way that you want, that you can replicate it. And then you start scaling up the number of clients. So start with a single client, but then add more. Um, let's say your target is uh, 32 clients, for example. That's the number that you want to, to test with and validate with. Um, you can build that in next. Uh, and then lastly, you know, this, this is a really important point too, is uh, making sure the key features and uh, differentiators, which I'm going to just call the sort of the special sauce that makes your product different from somebody else's. Um, you have to make sure that those things are working and working well. Um, that can be almost anything. There's many different uh, features that people are building into products these days, uh, things like parental controls, uh, band steering, um, all, all kinds of different things. That stuff, those things that make your product different need to really be validated uh, and they need to work well because that's what you're, you're promoting and marketing. So one quick story here, um, what you're looking at is a, a screenshot. This is actually a performance graph from uh, a CD router system. This, uh, this came about uh, about a year ago, actually. It was right before the pandemic. We were talking to one of our customers. Uh, they're an operator. And they came to us with an interesting uh, problem that they were seeing in the field. They were getting reports from their customers that one particular make and model of router was seeing... Um, sudden and unexpected uh, drops in performance. So this is something that their customers were reporting to them. They were having a hard time reproducing it. Um, it was a real challenging problem to, uh, to, to actually identify and then replicate. So they came to us, we talked about it. Um, they agreed to send us a few samples of this device so that we could actually do some testing with it in our lab. And uh, we did that. And what we actually found is that um, we, the, the real issue ended up being what we, what, what, what we ultimately discovered, I guess, is that this device would work very well if you just did functional testing. And the functional tests were all fine. Um, if you just tested performance, the device also worked fine. When we actually mixed functional and performance testing together, that's when we started to see some interesting behavior. And in particular, when we, we dove really deep, what we identified is that the, the trigger for the behavior, and you can actually see it in the graph here, the device started out at about 250 megabits per second. This is a performance graph. And then after about 20 minutes, it dropped by 90% down to uh, about 25 megabits per second. The trigger for this drop was Wi-Fi associations. Uh, so if there were enough Wi-Fi associations that happened within a certain period of time, you would see this behavior. Um, and that's why it was so difficult to, to uh, identify and replicate because in the field, it may take um, weeks or even longer for uh, a large number of Wi-Fi associations to build up and actually trigger the behavior to happen. It all depends on the size of that network that, that um, the router was in. So within CD router, we actually have a test case that does 100 Wi-Fi associations really quickly. Uh, all that it takes to replicate this behavior on this device is to run that test twice. 
um, you get up above 200 Wi-Fi associations and then the performance drops significantly. So uh, it was great. I love problems like this. Um, when we actually identified the issue and found the trigger, it was, uh, it was really nice to, to be able to share that with our customer and uh, just see this kind of interesting behavior. Um, all right, so we've talked about functional testing. The next big area to focus on is performance testing. And uh, I like to tell people, start with a single client again, keep it simple, and try to find the max throughput for a single client and make sure that that's what you expect it to be. Um, once you've done that, look at multi-client performance testing. And what you're gonna do now is, is look at the performance across multiple clients and, and calculate an aggregate throughput and make sure that that is uh, consistent with, with what you would expect as well. One of the really important things is to make sure that you test with different traffic profiles. And what's a traffic profile? It is a different type. Uh, it, it's just different combinations of uh, test traffic. So that could be UDP, TCP, multiport, it could be IPv4, IPv6. Uh, it can be the direction, uh, upstream, downstream, land to land. Uh, it's important to make sure that you try all of these things. Um, when you do that, what I like to do is then compare your performance results across traffic profiles and then across Wi-Fi modes. So going back to the Wi-Fi universe, making sure that you do this performance testing against as many of those modes as possible just so that you have a complete picture of how your device is, is working. So another story, another interesting dot. And um, the deal here is this, this one manufacturer, we've seen this for a number of years now, first noticed it maybe three or four years ago with one of their products. Their products, even their current ones still exhibit the same behavior. And I've only noticed it in this one manufacturer's devices. The behavior is that when you run performance tests across a wide variety of traffic profiles, and, and here on this graph, this is another performance graph from CD Router, I have six different traffic profiles running. Uh, IPv4 TCP download, IPv4 TCP upload, um, the same for UDP, and then the same for IPv6, all those combinations. What we see is that some of the traffic profiles are exactly 50% of the maximum for, uh, that we see for other traffic profiles. What you would expect and what we see in most cases is that uh, all traffic profiles have throughputs that are the same. But with this one manufacturer, we do not see that. Um, we see that some of their traffic profiles uh, achieve throughputs that are 50% of the max that others achieve. Um, so again, interesting result. And this is why it's important to make sure that you run uh, as many different traffic profiles uh, as possible when you're doing performance testing. The, the, the last big area to focus on for testing is, is what I'm gonna call stability testing. And stability testing is where functional and performance tests meet. And the key to stability testing is that you're trying to verify that a device behaves well over a long period of time. If you just run functional tests or just run performance tests for 30 minutes and everything looks good, that's a great data point, but that's not going to tell you if there are issues if the device just keeps running tests over and over and over again for, for longer periods of time. So that's the key to stability testing. Make sure you run tests for a day or a week um, just to understand whether or not it has any slow degradation over time. Things you wanna look for, degradation in performance, um, functional test duration. If you're running a bunch of DHCP tests, for example, and when you first start this long duration test run, the, the tests take, you know, on average five seconds, but then after 24 hours of running, now you see that the same tests are taking 50 seconds to run, there's an issue there. And, and that's, um, that's something that you need to go and investigate. 
Um, so stability testing is really, really important. Uh, it is what will tell you um, how well the behave, how well the device behaves um, over longer periods, and it's also what will expose protocol interactions that may not be otherwise uh, obvious when you just run functional and performance tests in isolation for short periods of time. <clears throat> so the last interesting uh, device that, that I want to show you here, this is a perfect example of why stability testing is so important. Uh, this was an off-the-shelf device. Uh, we purchased this at a local uh, electronics retailer uh, and hooked it up to CD router and uh, did some stability testing on it. Uh, we basically mixed performance tests and uh, just a handful of functional tests. I think it was DHCP, uh, some DNS tests, maybe some HTTP tests. Um, and mixed those together and then we just ran it, let it go and we looped it. And what we saw is that uh, after about six hours, the performance numbers started to drop. And you see this graph here. So this is, again, is a graph of performance over time. And you can see it's a slow and steady drop all the way down to almost zero after many, many hours. Um, that's fascinating, right? Again, this highlights why stability testing is so important. If you just ran this same set of tests for 30 minutes or um, just an hour, a couple of hours, you wouldn't have seen this. Um, but this is definitely something you wanna know about. Uh, how does this manifest itself in the field? This is a, a phone call to the operator from a customer that says, hey, my router is uh, really not performing very well. What's going on? The only uh, solution there is to really reboot the device. But this is something that will continue to recur for that customer over time. So stability testing, very important. All right, now let's talk a little bit about some test strategies. Uh, now, that, now that I've sort of described what kinds of things you should be doing, it's important to give you some pointers on how to actually do that. Um, so strategies for functional testing, the very first thing is to make sure that you understand your devices. Uh, why do I say that? Well. You need to understand what protocols, what features, um, what capabilities the device actually has. Once you have that, make a list if you have to. Once you have that, prioritize the testing of those devices. So there may be sort of core functions that are really, really important that you want to make sure work all the time. And uh, that are the first things that you test when you're going through a test cycle. That's the baseline, right? So you want to prioritize, you want to understand what things your devices uh, support, prioritize those, and then develop a baseline set of tests um, that you can run quickly. Um, another important thing is to make sure that uh, you investigate and understand test failures. You know, when you're running tests, um, obviously you hope to pass all of them, but the likelihood of that happening is very low. You will fail some tests. Go in and make sure that you understand why those are failing. Sometimes it's not actually a failure of the device itself. It may be a configuration issue. There, there may be some setting on the device that you need to enable, or it's a, a misconfiguration of some kind with the test tool. So that's why it's important. Make sure you understand those failures. If it's a configuration related thing, resolve it um, and, and then uh, move on. Um, look for deltas. And what do I mean by that? This again goes back to the Wi-Fi universe. If, if you're doing these, if, if you've set up a baseline set of functional tests, you wanna run that against as many different Wi-Fi modes and configurations as possible within that Wi-Fi universe. And then you wanna actually see, you wanna compare those, put them together and see, are there any differences in behavior across all those, those modes? Um, that's really interesting when you, when you do that. Um, and it will highlight if you have issues in, in certain areas. Um, one other strategy that I like to use, again, uh, this uh, can help in many cases is to repeat failed tests. Wi-Fi is, um, you will get packet loss. It's an unpredictable medium and uh, it's just not quite as uh, robust 
depending on uh, the environment as uh, Ethernet. So I, I like to rerun failed tests. That will tell you if a failure is a consistent failure or if it was um, maybe just a sporadic one-time failure that was due to packet loss or something of that nature. So think about that as well when you're running functional tests. Um, and lastly, uh, again, keep it simple. Start with a single client. And then once you understand that, you have those baseline tests running, uh, then scale up the number of clients. And uh, just make sure that when you actually do scale up the number of clients, there's no significant uh, change in functional behavior. Uh, not so much now, but years ago, uh, if we ran a functional test using CD router with just one client, everything would be fine on many devices. But when you actually scale the number of clients up to, to like 32, for example, you start to see some different uh, behavior, some weird things would start happening. That's less of an issue now. I think as these devices have become more powerful, uh, not, not, uh, not, not so big a deal. But again, something to, to experiment with. All right, so strategies for performance testing. Uh, the biggest one here is to understand your environment. If you have a chamber, an isolation chamber, use it. If you don't have an isolation chamber, that's totally fine. Um, you don't need one. But if your environment is very noisy and congested and you have a lot of stuff going on, make sure that you set reasonable thresholds. You may not be able to achieve those um, absolute maximum performance numbers for a specific mode if you don't have a chamber and your environment is noisy. And that, that's, that's okay. Uh, just set reasonable thresholds for what you think you should be able to achieve in your environment and work with those. Um, related to that, don't necessarily always focus on trying to achieve those absolute maximums all the time. Um, I actually think it can be more useful to look at relative numbers. So set a reasonable threshold, use that as the pass fail basis for your performance testing. And then when you start testing across all the different combinations of um, Wi-Fi configurations in the Wi-Fi universe, compare those using relative numbers and look for deltas. If you see significant issues with, um, let's say WPA3 uh, enterprise, for example, when you run performance um, using WPA3 enterprise versus WPA3 personal, that tells you you have an issue there that you need to go and investigate. So um, that's why looking at deltas and using relative performance numbers is, is uh, a, a great strategy. Um, it's also really helpful to loop and repeat tests. So when I'm doing performance testing, I like to make sure that I run, I don't just run one test for five minutes and get the number. I like to actually run a bunch of tests and that will just help to normalize things to make sure that uh, the number that you do get is consistent and doesn't fluctuate over time. And that's also how you can generate those, those performance graphs to actually make sure that um, there aren't significant variations and things are relatively smooth. So keep that in mind as well when you're doing performance testing. All right, strategies for stability testing. Um, this is an interesting one. And uh, as I mentioned, stability testing really needs to run over longer durations, right? That's the whole point. Um, that means you need time to do it. And so you have to understand your test cycle. If you're in a CI CD environment where you're trying to get test results really quick, then uh, that's not the right place for stability testing. Use that time to focus on those functional baseline tests. That's what you really need in that environment save the stability testing for uh, at night when you don't have developers working or when you don't need really quick results. Um, do it at night, do it over the weekend, um, save the stability testing, but definitely make sure you do it because it's really, really important. Um, when you do do stability testing, it's critical that you mix functional and performance tests. Uh, if you just run long duration functional tests, it may turn some things up, no doubt. Um, and the same is true for performance. But when you really start to see interesting behaviors, when you mix functional performance tests together, and that's because things that are happening on the functional side, like D 
DHCP leases or Wi-Fi associations will actually impact performance. And the performance metrics, or the sorry, the performance numbers, that is the heartbeat, that's the pulse of your device. And that's what will actually tell you if there's anything weird going on. So I like to mix functional and performance tests when I do stability testing. Again, loop and repeat tests, that's how you can extend that duration out. Um, and lastly, don't reboot the DUT. Um, rebooting the DUT sort of puts it back to a clean state and may actually hide things. And so when you're doing these, like a, a 10 hour stability test, leave the dot running the whole time. Um, it's really interesting to, to, to see uh, how the dot does without being rebooted over that period. And uh, you won't hide anything that way either. All right, so who should be testing? Um, really everyone. Uh, everybody in the chain has, has a role to play here. Uh, the chipset, uh, vendors, the OEMs, ODMs, operators, everybody needs to be testing. Um, the goals are different for uh, depending on who you are and what you're testing. Um, you know, it's, it, if you're a, uh, if you're developing the actual software that that goes on to one of these routers, then you may have a CI CD environment. And in that environment, you really want as I mentioned earlier, quick results. You know, when you have developers, a team of developers uh, making changes to the to the software, uh, whenever they make a commit, they they are going to want a uh, ideally like a per commit test run that's really quick so that they know um, if they've broken anything. So you're going to want that per commit style test. Um, you may want a nightly smoke test. Um, and if, if you're instead not developing software and, and, and validating firmware, so you get the firmware from somebody else, it's going to be a slightly different strategy. So everybody has a different, um, has a different test goal. Um, but the key is that everybody needs to be testing. Uh, ultimately, it's the operators that are qualifying devices before deployment. Um, and they're their end goal is to make sure that the user has a, a, a good experience with that product. That's really the end goal for all of us, for everybody. Um, all right, uh, so I figured in the last few minutes here that I would actually share a few tips for the CD router users in the crowd. I know there's many uh, CD router folks out there uh, watching and um, the first thing I'll say is that CD router has all of the tools you need to implement almost everything that I've talked about in this webinar. Um, be sure you have the latest version of CD router running. That's important to make sure you have all the latest features. If uh, Wi-Fi 6 is um, something that you really wanna test make sure that you are running uh, or make sure that you have one of our uh, current NTA 1000 platforms. Um, I like to tell people uh, to start with WPA3 personal and enterprise testing. That's really important. That's becoming uh, the standard now in all of these devices. Um, it is the most secure uh, Wi-Fi security um, mode that we have right now. So make sure you test that. Uh, CD router has a lot of different controls for um, exploring WPA3. So there's a lot of things you can do with CD router. Um, definitely check that out. One other feature that I'm not sure that everybody knows about is that CD router does have the ability to generate wireless captures. Um, and what we do is, is when you turn this on, the test far is Wi-Fi capture. When you turn this feature on, we actually create a monitor interface on the wireless card that you're using and sniff uh, packets from the air. So um, these packets are true wireless uh, packets. They'll have the radio tap headers, which is really uh, useful in some cases if you wanna look at RSSI values or beacon information, uh, any of that stuff. Uh, so that's there, it's built in. Just turn that on and what you'll see now is in CD Router's web UI in the drop down, there's another wireless capture when you turn this feature on. Um, 
sort of key to all of this testing here is, is to, um, and I didn't make this point earlier, but automate. You need to automate all of this testing. Um, that's the only way to, to really uh, scale up and deal with um, the volume of testing that, that you should be doing. Um, CD Router has a, a REST API built in and that documentation is on the support site. Uh, that's really the best way. Once you've uh, developed that baseline set of functional tests, you've done some performance testing, you've done stability testing. Once you've figured all of that out and how you want to approach that, now you can actually uh, automate all of that within CD Router using the REST API. And I recommend that people do that early in the process because once you have that figured out, you can build on that. So um, keep it simple, get those baseline tests up and running, do uh, performance tests, uh, functional tests and stability tests, and then automate it. And then from there, scale up and start looking at other protocols and, and more comprehensive test strategies. Um, another feature that uh, exists in CD Router that can be helpful, there is a, a, a Wi-Fi uh, system debug option that you can turn on and this, this will enable um, a lot of uh, Wi-Fi related logs or log messages in the log files, which can be useful if you're troubleshooting an issue. Um, if you have uh, a mesh uh, setup or if you have mesh nodes as part of your um, device uh, configuration, you can steer CD routers LAN, cl uh, LAN clients to specific mesh nodes using the LAN BSS ID test FAR. And you can also steer CD router to specific channels. If you have a dual band router, for example, and you want CD router to only connect on the five gig radio, you can use the LAN channel test FAR to do that. Um, again, I've said this a few times, but start simple. Don't, don't uh, try and tackle too much here. On the, on the testing side. Uh, my strategy when I evaluate a new device is to always start with the top 100 tests that are included with CD Router. That's, uh, for those of you that haven't used these, the top 100, we have two, two test lists, one for IPv4, one for IPv6. These are 100 tests that basically every modern device should pass. Uh, with minimal configuration. It only takes 15 minutes to run each one. And so this is a great litmus test for, um, for new devices. Uh, I always start there. And that's, uh, that will give you a good idea of the, 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 the functional side of a device. Then you can mix in some performance tests and run those again, and then you can actually loop those, and now you've got some stability tests. So it's a great way to get started. Definitely check out the top 100 if you haven't used those before. And lastly, uh, if you have multiple CD router systems, uh, you can set those all up, and you can run tests in parallel. And uh, if you've automated everything using the REST API, you now actually can start um, controlling, running tests in parallel, pulling those um, the, pulling those results out and uh, doing all of the things that I've talked about here in the webinar. Um, so um, that, there's all, uh, actually one other point that I didn't put on here. Uh, CD Router does have a number of um, Wi-Fi specific test cases, which are really interesting to look at as well. So uh, there's the Wi-Fi test module, check that one out. That's where that, um, association stress test that I used to trigger the poor behavior in uh, duck number one way back at the beginning of the presentation. That's where that test lives. Uh, if you have TR69 built into your device, we have a whole test module that um, uses TR69 to configure the router for different Wi-Fi modes. And then um, we try to connect one of CD Router's Wi-Fi clients uh, to the dot and then pass traffic through it. It's a fantastic test that verifies the whole thing um, from management configuration of Wi-Fi to connection of Wi-Fi and passing traffic. Um, so that's another great set of tests to look at. Um, all right, and we're just about done and then we'll open it up to Q&A. The last thing I wanna mention is that uh, we have a new product that we're working on called Passport. 
Um, Passport is designed first and foremost for testing IoT and smart home products. And we're looking at a lot of these same Wi-Fi issues, but applied to that type of a device, IoT and smart home. Um, so this is coming soon. And uh, if you have any questions or if you want more information, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you about it. Um, I think that's about it, uh, Jason. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so there's just a couple of the, the resources that we want. Matt has graciously volunteered to throw his uh, actual email address up on here. So if you have any questions uh, about the way that this all works and uh, you know further testing strategies, feel free to reach out to Matt directly. Um, he 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 won't feel. He won't feel spammed by it. He loves answering these questions. I um, love talking about this stuff. So please <laughs> yeah, reach out to me. Uh, we have a bunch of resources on our support site. Uh, just the user, the CD Rider user guides alone and the, uh, the top 100 cases um, and the lists of uh, t tests and everything um, can all be found there. And it's, it's, it's a great resource. There's so much stuff there. Um, and we're work, working on doing, doing some more in that regard. Uh, I posted this next article in the chat. Um, this is, uh, it's, it's an article we wrote um, a couple months ago about um, test automation strategy, not just about Wi-Fi, but uh, you know, for, for these products in general and what kinds of testing uh, people should do at each stage. So depending on who you are. So if you're doing that CI, CD stuff, there's different kinds of testing than you should do at the system integrator level uh, that you should then and different than you should do at Q&A and, and at, at QA. Um, and, uh, but it, it's really good and it talks a little bit, basically it feeds back into what Matt has been talking about here. So we wanted to make sure that we included it.